Now, the Crimean Peninsula is about 27,000 square kilometers, and it juts into the Black Sea. A year into the war, the region has time and again become a battleground. The peninsula, of course, reminds Ukraine of the land that it lost to Russian annexation in 2014. But for Russia, Crimea is strategically important because it provides Moscow with its only access to a warm water port. On Saturday, the peninsula woke up to a massive fire that was reported at Sevastopol. And immediately in the aftermath of that, what was suspected was a drone strike. And it was then being reported that a drone strike had hit a fuel storage tank, which resulted in this huge fire. Now the Moscow installed governor has confirmed that the fire has been extinguished at this moment. Meanwhile, Russia also claims that Ukraine resorted to shelling five Russian villages, power lines being damaged. No casualties have been reported. Now, these attacks have come to time when Ukraine has declared that it is ready for a spring counteroffensive. Now, remember, Ukraine's spring counteroffensive is an operation that has been in the works for a pretty long time. The Pentagon documents that were leaked has hinted at a similar strategy. Now, if the Pentagon papers that got leaked are to be believed, then the offensive is expected to start on the 30th of April, that is in some hours from now. Now, like most war strategies, Ukraine is not keeping its cards close to the chest because Pentagon quite clearly seems to know what Ukraine's strategy is. And when the Pentagon papers leaked, Ukraine's strategy appears to have been leaked as well. Я думаю, що в кратчайші сроки вони будуть готові до виконання будь-яких завдань. Now remember, Kiev managed to make some pretty swift gains through the second half of 2022 after it had lost a lot of territory. But then, its forces have not been able to make much of a headway in the last five months. What this has done is Russia has managed to hold on to the gains that it has made. And at this moment as we speak, Russia controls nearly about 20% of Ukraine's territory. But the war at this moment is poised at a pretty critical juncture. Ukrainian troops have been training hard at Western bases. Their arsenal is full with new tanks and other weapon systems that have been given by the Americans and other NATO allies. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg has said that nearly about 98% of the combat vehicles promised to Ukraine have been delivered. Now, clearly, Europe's largest armed conflict since the Second World War is now entering into the next phase. But the question, of course, is this. The explosions that were witnessed in Crimea today, is this the beginning of Ukraine's spring counteroffensive? And to try and give us more perspective on this, we're being joined by Vadim Turkham, who's joining us live from Kiev. He's a former diplomat. Now, Mr. Turkham, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Beyond. The question that I want to ask you is what a lot of people are asking at this moment. We saw the scenes that have been unfolding at the Crimean Peninsula at Sevastopol, where, according to reports, a drone strike resulted in a massive fire at what is being reported to be a fuel depot. And also what is being reported is that this was done to try and target the fuel supplies for Russia's naval fleet stationed at Sevastopol. Is that what has happened today? Sally, hello, India. This is my pleasure to be again in your broadcast. Uh, you are asking very good questions. Thank you for this. First of all, what is going on in uh, Ukraine on our, let's say, battlefields against Russia? Uh, Ukraine wants um, uh, to return its territories. Ukraine wants to uh, return its people. And uh, it's a matter of principle to organize this, um, uh, like you called it, uh, spring counter-offensive or counter-attack in order to kick out from our territory Russian troops. 
Uh, just two days ago, Russian missiles hit uh, several our um, civilian big cities, Nikola Nikolaev, uh, Uman in Cherkasy region, and Dnipr. Uh, all those three regions, uh, unfortunately, were under attack of Russian Federation, and uh, many civilians were killed, including, uh, if I'm not mistaken, six um, uh, children. And, of course, the uh, uh, Ukrainian army cannot uh, just tolerate uh, the missiles attack of Russia. And uh, what uh, was happened uh, uh, this morning in Crimea, this is actually a response. Mm -hmm. And you right mentioned that um, uh, uh, more than 10,000 um, um, fuel were burned as a result. And, of course, now for Russian uh, troops, it's, it is a very difficult problem how to fill in this gap, right. how to fill in... The the tanks in the um, uh, Black Sea Fleet. Of course, uh, this is not uh, the beginning of the counteroffensive. This is just, you know, one simple, uh, very successful military operation. But what our army want to achieve, to prepare, you know, the ground for counteroffensive, to hit uh, those log logistical uh, lines, to hit those um, uh, military bases, which are uh, on uh, uh, temporary occupied Ukrainian territory, and even to hit those military objects which are used by Russian army from Russian territory. That's why sometimes we see the reports um, um, about um, uh, military drones attacks right. on the Russian territory in Belgrade, Kursk, near Moscow, and so on. And this is just the beginning. Russians um, wanted from the very um, beginning of the offensive uh, back to 2022, uh, 24 fourth of uh, February to destroy all the country, to occupy all the country. Uh, Mr. Now Trupan, you know, I, I need to just interject there because, you know, the yeah, target okay. that has been hit is Sevastopol, which is the headquarters of Russia's Black Sea Fleet. It is as high profile a target that, that can be hit in the Ukraine war. The question that I want to ask you is, for several weeks now, Ukraine has been talking about a spring counteroffensive. The Pentagon Papers that leaked they indicated that Ukraine wanted to start its spring counteroffensive once it had got all the weapons that the Western allies wanted to send to Ukraine. Now, Jens Stoltenberg, the chief of the NATO military alliance, he, of course, has said that the NATO nations have transferred nearly about 98% of all the weapon systems to Ukraine. So what we are looking at in Sevastopol, is this the beginning of Ukraine's counteroffensive? No, no, sorry, let's be honest. Uh, Mr. Stoltenberg said that um, Ukraine has received 98% of the military weapons promised to Ukraine. But still we need um, other systems like um, military aircraft, like F-16 or something like this. We need um, muscles with uh, long um, distance um, um, abilities. We need uh, more uh, ammunition. So. Right. Uh, President Zelensky, just if I'm not mistaken, uh, this morning or yesterday in the evening said in the response of foreign um, um, journalists that um, um, uh, we are not in the position to wait until we will receive everything what we need because um, um, we have to return our territories. All That's right. why soon we will start counteroffensive. As a um, higher uh, commander, he has a right to make a decision, and his decision. And will be published soon, I think. We don't know whether a counteroffensive will start tomorrow, in one week or in one month, or I don't know mm -hmm. in what time. But when our military forces are prepared, then they will start. And where, where they will go? In Crimea Peninsula, in, they will be heading to Donetsk, to Lugansk or to Mariupol or other uh, uh, cities, we don't know. Because, you know, right. uh, the effect of uh, unexpectedly... Um, Absolutely, indeed. It is difficult. I, I agree with you, Mr. Trukhan. It is difficult to predict, you know, as to where of course, of course. fighting could intensify. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us all the way from Kiev in this very difficult moment for the Ukrainian people and sharing us with us as to what is happening at this moment. But what is happening at this moment as we speak in Crimea, a very high-profile target, of course, has been hit by the Ukrainian forces. Ukraine does not officially take responsibility for attacks such as this. But all indicators point out that this drone strike that has targeted the fuel depot at Sevastopol, which is the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, was something that was carried out by Ukraine. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Khan, for joining us from Kiev. Thank you. Bye-bye. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.